Greetings traders from all around the world. Thank you for joining me again. Chris here bringing you another survival guide episode. Today we're going to be covering the Russell 2000. So without further ado, let's get going. Most people will tell you that they've heard of the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but when it comes to the Russell 2000 index, it's a little bit of a mystery to most people, including some traders. So today, it's our goal to cover what the Russell 2000 is, as well as some of the various tradable instruments that stem from it. So what is it? Well, the Russell 2000 is an index measuring the performance of approximately 2,000 small cap American companies in the Russell 3000 index, which is made of 3,000 of the largest U.S. stocks. The Russell 2000 is a market cap weighted index. By the numbers, let's take a look at the index characteristics of the Russell 2000 compared to the Russell 3000. The Russell 2000 has a price book of 1.64 compared to the 2.70 over here of the Russell 3000. The dividend yield would be a 1.92 compared to the 2.28. The earnings 3.81 versus 16.62. And our growth over five years 11.06 versus 13.7. And then our number of holdings would be 1979 compared to 2976. Now, when we go down into market capitalization in billions of dollars, of course, we have the Russell 2000 again on the left and the Russell 3000 on the right. The Russell 2000 average market cap was $2.053 billion, whereas comparatively, we have a $244 billion cap with the 3000. The median market cap with the Russell 2000 was 0.49, with the Russell 3000 1.158, and with the largest stock by market cap, we have an 11.22 versus a 1208.503. The long story short here, obviously the Russell 3000 is going to represent a larger portion financially of the market, but both are very liquid indexes in general. You might be sitting there wondering, why in the world would I care about the Russell 2000 or why would any investors care about the Russell 2000 if there's a bigger, badder, older brother called the Russell 3000 that has a higher market cap and more money in terms of the companies that make up the index? Well, it's common for investors to compare small cap mutual fund performances with the Russell 2000 index due to the fact that it reflects the return opportunity presented by the entire subsection of that market instead of opportunities offered by narrower indices which might contain certain biases or perhaps more stock specific risk that can distort a fund manager's results. So essentially, the Russell 2000 can allow traders to get a more accurate view of the smaller cap stocks when compared to using the Russell 3000, which obviously isn't made up of the smaller cap stocks. The fact that the Russell 2000 is comprised of small cap stocks means it is a highly dynamic instrument which can unlock substantial profit opportunities for the trader. What is typical for small cap companies is that they are usually leaders in terms of innovation and growth. The small size of their operation grants them the flexibility to new regulations, changing market environments, chances to adopt new technologies, etc. etc. During market expansions and periods of economic growth, small companies do tend to perform better and grow quicker. 
Something else to take note of is one of the reasons that traders flock to the Russell 2000 is the added volatility that the market might display being made up of small cap companies. And that's largely due to things that small companies are more susceptible to, such as high sensitivity to labor costs and wage growth, or the more likelihood of being funded by government credits, which makes them more vulnerable to interest rate changes. Some key facts about the Russell 2000 at a glance would be that the Russell 2000 was created in 1984 by the Frank Russell Company and is currently maintained by the FTSE Russell, which is a subsidiary of the London Stock Exchange Group. The index represents around 8 to 10% of the total market cap of the Russell 3000. Many mutual funds and ETFs are tied to or based on the Russell 2000. As we continue down our fact street, the Russell 2000 is comparable to other small cap indices like the S&P 600. Despite similarities, the Russell 2000 has overtaken the S&P 600 to become the more popular choice amongst the investing world, both as a benchmark and as a small cap investment tool. Many view the Russell 2000 as an important measure of the American economy because it measures the performance of smaller, domestically focused businesses. There are some key differences that separate the Russell 2000 from others that we already mentioned, such as the Dow Jones Industrial Average at the beginning. So the Russell 2000 is weighted by shares outstanding just right off the bat, separating it from the DJIA. This means that a member stock's last sale price, as well as the number of shares that can actually be traded rather than the company's full market capitalization, influence the index. And when we continue further, the Russell 2000 also pays attention to the performance of companies with special characteristics. An example of this would be the Growth and Value Index. The Growth Index measures the performance of Russell 2000 companies with higher price-to-book ratios and higher forecasted growth values. Where the Russell 2000 Value Index measures the performance of Russell 2000 companies with lower price to book ratios and lower forecasted growth values. Other than that, it also benchmarks small cap stocks. And when I say it, of course, we're talking about the Russell 2000. The popular S&P 500 and the DJIA track large cap stocks in comparison. At this point, you're probably wondering, well, can I trade the Russell 2000? And the answer is yes, we can. The Russell 2000 index can be made investable by mirroring the index using component shares or through index futures, mutual funds, exchange trading funds, which we know as ETFs, such as the Russell 2000 ETF. And there are also options available for IWM and Russell 2000 index futures for those of you that love your options. Continuing on with the topic of trading the Russell 2000, on July 10th of 2017, the CME Group began offering the E-mini Russell 2000 futures contract. The ticker symbol for this, if you're looking, is going to be RTY. The instrument has quickly become a preferred choice for investors willing to get cost-efficient exposure to small-cap U.S. stocks. Once again, the appeal with small-cap stocks would be the appeal of small-cap companies. The volatility there is attractive for those looking to make extreme gains in relatively short periods of time. Then, in May of 2019, the CME introduced the Micro E-Mini Russell 2000 Future, which is known as the M2K as far as the ticker symbol goes. The contracts here are one-tenth of the size of the RTY and replicate the movement of its bigger counterpart entirely. What this means to us is if we don't have the capital to safely execute trading the RTY, all of a sudden, Big Brother CME came along and provided a cheaper alternative to trade the same market. 
Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an E-mini Russell 2000 futures contract. These are some of the specifications that, as always, if you're ever curious, you can go over to the CME Group page and find all of these for any future offered. The symbol for the Russell 2000 futures contract, as we said, is going to just be RTY. That is what we're going to type in to our asset finder on any trading platform if we're searching for the Russell 2000 futures contract. The contract size is going to be $50 times the Russell 2000 index. The minimum tick will be 0.1 index points, and a tick value will represent $5. $5 a tick. The trading hours are going to be rather standard. It's going to be Sunday to Friday to 6 p.m. with a break till 5 p.m. Eastern time with a halt at 4.15 to 4.30 p.m. The contract will have five months in the quarterly cycle. That's March, June, September, and December. The options available will be quarterly with monthly, weekly, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday options as well. Termination of trading can occur up to 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time on the third Friday of the contract month. While we're at it, let's keep it going and take a look at the Micro E-Mini contract because of course we don't want to discriminate based on size. Ha ha! So the symbol for the Micro E-Mini is going to be the M2K. M2K, just like we described, is how we're going to find this on our asset finder. The contract size will be $5 times the Russell 2000 index, which is one-tenth the size of our previously discussed contract. The minimum tick is going to be 0.1 index points, with a tick value being only 50 cents. The trading hours will be exactly the same as we already discussed, with the contract months being March quarterly cycles, March, June, September, and December. Our options contracts will be March, June, September, and December, and also listed for five consecutive quarters. When deciding whether E-mini futures contracts or ETFs are the way to go, there are definitely some clear advantages that the futures variation has over the ETFs that I'd like to discuss. The first one off the bat is going to be lower commissions. So with the futures notional value being close to $85,000, which is when we multiply the index value by 50, the ETF on the other hand is only $170. This means it requires close to 500 contracts just to equal one RTY contract, which ultimately will result in higher transaction costs. In some cases, ETF instruments also allow for after hours trading, but most of the time they're not available 24 seven. And even though futures contracts are not, we have 22 hours a day that futures contracts are. And even though the cash equity market is closed during a big part of the trading hours, futures contracts are still known for their excellent liquidity. And finally, we have lower management fees. Another advantage is going to be the lower management fees, and that is the cost associated with trading that we inevitably can't avoid, but we can choose cheaper options. With the ETF, for example, you can hold the instrument forever. The RTY, on the other hand, has a fixed quarterly expiration cycle, which would be March, June, September, and December, like we saw in the previous slides. Although maintaining your future position throughout the year incurs some additional costs, it is way lower when it's compared to the almost 0.2% management fee of the ETF. Due to the volatile nature of the small companies that make up the Russell 2000 index, it has become a spread haven where traders favor spreads to lower some of their risk. One of the scenarios that we see traders doing is when small caps outperform large cap stocks, we then see traders going long on the E-mini Russell 2000 and short on the E-mini S&P 500 at the same time. Another alternative option is when small caps are outperforming mid cap stocks, we then see longs on the E-mini Russell 2000 and shorts on the E-mini S&P mid cap 400. And third, we have a large cap scenario where the large caps are outperforming the small cap stocks, leading to longs on the E-mini S&P 500, but shorts on the E-mini Russell 2000. 
And finally, when the mid caps are outperforming the small cap stocks, we see traders go long on the E-mini S&P mid cap 400, but short on the E-mini Russell 2000. These are just various spread strategies that traders use with an attempt to lower their risk. Obviously, individual experience is going to vary, not to sound like an infomercial, but of course folks, do your research. In conclusion, the Russell 2000 index is an index that is made up of the smaller companies which oftentimes can be considered undervalued, leading to strong volatility and potential gains for traders who are looking to take advantage of either futures with the E-minis or the E-micros recently added, or the ETF options as well. There's various tradable assets out there around the Russell 2000 like we discussed, and it makes up a very liquid market with with severe profit potential for those that are able to master it. But in the meantime, folks, thank you for joining me again for another Survival Guide episode. I appreciate it as always. Good luck and happy trading, and please make sure you click the like and subscribe button below to be notified of the next time we come out with a video. Cheers all of you, over and out.